Welcome back painting friends. Today we are going to paint a windmill. It's like a request from a viewer um, with some tulips. So you're going to need a lot of colors. You're going to need pretty much every color. So I've got light blue, white, brown, red, pink, black, orange, yellow, green, and purple. And of course that can change based on what color you want your tulips to be. My favorite brush is my one inch flat brush as well as my 10, six, and one round brush. Don't forget to have a cup of water and a rag handy for keeping your brushes clean. So let's get our background on here. So I am going really off of the photograph that was sent to me from um, Holland, Michigan, from my friend Susan. And what that is, is it's the, the horizon line is right in the center of the paper and then it goes up. So the white line should be right here in the middle. So I'm gonna take white paint right across the middle of my canvas, and then I'm gonna pull some of that up because the, the sky itself in the picture is super light. So I want most of it to be white. It's a very, very, very light blue. So almost all the way to the top. I'll stop before, just before I hit the top. And then keeping my brush dirty, I'm gonna take some blue paint and I'm gonna go across the top of my canvas and I'm just gonna pull that color down. Now, if I notice that I'm getting too little blue, I can always go and grab some more from the top, but that's exactly what I was looking for, a very light blue. So I'm gonna start now at the bottom, really blend it in pretty well as I move up towards the top. I could take this brush, I can wipe it off and wash it off. And then as far as my tulip field goes, I'm actually gonna start with some spots of brown paint. because so I want the base layer under my tulips to be nice and dark. And then I'm gonna add some green with it. You can even add a spot of yellow back here towards the edge, okay? And then I'm just gonna start at the bottom and kind of blend these colors together, pulling them up to my sky. Wash that brush off, wipe it off. We'll let our background dry. When we come back, we will add in our next layer, which will be our clouds, our windmill, and our tulips. So in the photograph that was sent to me, there are no clouds in the sky, but I feel like there's gonna be a big, huge open space over here if I don't add something. So I'm gonna take some water on my paintbrush and some white paint. So it's watered down white paint, and I am just going to kind of dot and dab just a little bit, not too much, almost nothing, just some clouds in the sky. And as they go up, they're gonna get a little bit fatter and thicker. And all I'm doing is kind of dotting and pulling, trying to make it really fast so that I don't have a whole lot of control over my brush. It just kind of does its own thing. Let's get that brush wash off. Now let's lay in our, um, our background, the space between the ground and the sky, as well as our windmill. So for my background, I'm gonna use a bit of green and yellow on my number 10 round brush. And I am just going to kind of go through and lay some color down here in different levels so that it looks like there is some, maybe like a forest or something back here stop right about there because that's where my windmill is going to start. So with my number 10 round brush and some brown paint, I'm going to use a little bit of white and a little bit of brown so I can lighten my brown up just a bit. 
I'm gonna draw out my windmill. And there's a lot of different windmills online, so if you don't like the way this one looks, look online and make your own, that's fine. But the base of the windmill, it looks like, it's got two legs that kind of pop out to the side, and then it gets flat in the middle. And I can cover this whole space in with this color. Maybe I'll bring it down onto the grass a little bit. From there, I'm gonna take a little bit of black on my brush and I'm going to make a base that is slightly larger than this. This is, um, looks like a walkway across there. Wipe that brush off and then I'm gonna go back to that brown and white color. And then my windmill is going to be just slightly larger right here, and it's actually gonna come up to a rounded point. Go ahead and wash that brush off. And then we're gonna add in our actual windmill later, but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add some details to this. So at the base down here, I'm gonna take a little bit of the dark brown and I'm going to just darken this up and kind of pull that color up a little bit in what looks like a little smiley face. So that means that I'm kind of curving this line. I don't want it to be straight. I'm curving this line and I'm just kind of pulling that color up in a curved line. Just underneath this, I'm going to add some black, wipe that brush off and I'm going to pull some of that black down to show where there's a shadow. Put it at the top of this. Just kind of pull some of that color down. Now, as far as my little handrail around my walkway, I'm going to make, and I like to use my number 10 brush for this. I just kind of flatten the bristles out, but if you want to get a smaller flat brush or even um, a smaller round brush and do that you can but I'm just gonna put a couple of posts on here as small as I can make them and then a small little line right at the top of course we need to add windows for our windmill and so I'm gonna use some of my light blue paint with some white paint because I want it to be a super 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 light blue color and again, my number 10 round brush is my favorite, but if you need to get a smaller brush to make smaller spaces, feel free to. I'm gonna add two little square windows right up here. So I might even start the, a third one over here so it doesn't look too symmetrical. And we're going to add a couple down here at the bottom as well. These are going to be rectangles because they're at the bottom layer. Wipe 
Wipe that brush off. I'm gonna add a little bit of black paint for a door right over here. All right, we'll finish our windmill up in a little bit. Let's talk about our tulips. Now you could do your tulips any way you want. And the picture that I was sent, um, you can't really see the rows of tulips going up towards the windmill, but you can see um, the tulips themselves. But I kind of want to do the rows. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to make rows of tulips that kind of go across here. Okay, so I'm going to take, hmm, I'm gonna use a little bit of bright green paint so that I know where I'm going. And I'm gonna draw my lines out and just make these lines kind of go across. But when they come up to the front, they're gonna be more wide than they were in the back. So I'm gonna do maybe five colors of tulips. And you can choose as many colors as you want. But when you go to do your tulips, like let's say my first row is going to be white, I could just take white paint on my brush and I'm gonna tap it around, okay? And I am gonna be putting myself in a speed motion in a minute for this, but I'm gonna tap this around. Now every tulip will have a little bit of color variation in it. So you have to decide what color variation you are comfortable with. And then you're gonna take that second color and you're just gonna gently add it in a little more sparsely than the first color. Oh, I just realized you can barely see that. Let me show you another row. Sorry, I thought my camera was right on, but it's not. This row right here, let's do this one with pinks. So like I said, you're gonna take this and you are just gonna tap your number 10 round brush around on here. And as you're doing that, you are going to leave a little bit of green space showing, not too much but that little bit of green space. And then you wanna pick a second color, a color that you think would be in that tulip family. So maybe a white or a red would fit in well with this. I think I'm gonna use white. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white paint on my dirty brush and just tap that in every once in a while, just to give it a little bit of a second color. Um, the pink and the white will mix and that's exactly what you want it to do. You don't wanna have really bright white spots. You wanna have more like some light pink areas where those pink tulips and those light pink tulips are growing in the same space. So you're gonna do this for all of these areas and I'm gonna put myself in speed motion while I go through and tap those out. those pieces finished now what I'm going to do is just take some green with maybe a little bit of yellow or a little bit of brown and just kind of dab in these spaces in the middle because I don't want them to be solid so I can grab a little bit of yellow and go through here or even a little bit of white just to give it an, a little bit more interesting texture than that super dull green that's underneath Now, as it goes back towards the end of my canvas, I'm probably not gonna see as many spaces to add that green in, and that's okay. I mean, re all the way back here, there's almost nothing. But I can totally add it right underneath here. Okay, now I am going to zoom us in on this windmill and finish it up. Now, let's just remember that my favorite brush to paint with is my number 10 round brush. So if you can flatten your number 10 round brush out, I just take my fingers and kind of pull it flat, then you're good. If you don't wanna do that, you can get yourself a smaller brush. But here's what I'm gonna do first, is I'm going to outline my windows and put little lines down the middle. Now, 
My ones up top are just gonna have the cross beams. So we're just gonna have like a T in the middle, not three lines. For my windmill so same thing I'm gonna use my number 10 round brush um, my windmill is gonna be accessed right here so this is gonna be the axis for it right there I just use the back of my brush to make a dot and I am going to make a gigantic letter X now if that stresses you out making a straight line you can always grab a ruler I'm not super worried about that dot because I'm gonna add some more things to this so it might cover it up. So from there, I'm gonna do more of a ghost line, okay? So more of a ghost line, that's a line that sometimes you see and sometimes you don't, but it's gonna copycat the top of these lines. And then from there, I'm gonna add some short lines down. Again, these are gonna be ghost lines, so sometimes you see these, sometimes you don't. and a couple of lines that go this way as well. Some more ghost lines that go along this direction. I'm gonna let this dry and when we come back, we're gonna add our final details, which is the last part of our windmill. So to finish this off, I said I wanted to have my black dry. And what I'm gonna do now is take just a little bit of watered down white paint. So I don't want a whole lot of paint on my brush and I definitely want it to be watered down. So it's almost more like a watercolor. And then with that watercolor paint, I am going to add in some more lines. I almost want it to look as though there's like a veil over the top of this. I also want to go in and just add a couple of lines for detail so that you could see the stonework on my I almost said lighthouse but it's not it's a windmill so I'm gonna take my brush I'm gonna flatten it out again and take some brown paint and I am just going to make some lines that go top to bottom as well as left to right I don't have to make each individual box to show that there is some texture on this building. When you're finished, you need to pick a color that's gonna show up well on your canvas and sign your name. Remember that I never get to see what you're painting at home unless you post it to our Facebook page, Painting with a Purpose. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Painting with a Purpose, so you are kept up to date on all of our latest tutorials. And remember, as always, stay kind, stay creative, and stay safe. Have a great day, friends. Bye now.